Life is not scripted. No one hands you a script in the morning with the lines of dialogue that you're going to say, the clothes you're going to wear, or what you're going to do throughout the day. You just figure it out as you go. You, you improvise. Uh, by a show of hands, how many of you are familiar with improvisational theatre? Many of you are. Terrific. But um, for those of you who didn't put up um, your hand, Improv theater is unscripted, spontaneous storytelling told in real time, on the spot, um, based often on audience suggestions. Not always, but, but uh, one form of improv theater would have the audience provide the content for the scene. So if the, uh, the host of a show were to come out and say, what's your favorite room in the house? You would say, you would say, Kitchen, excellent, okay, or uh, what do you want to be when you grow up? A dancer. Uh, dancer, excellent. And magically, before your very eyes, improvisers will create a scene about a kitchen or about a dancer uh, out of nothing, really. We have no costumes. You can see these are some of my fellow improvisers that I uh, play with. Um, we have very few props. We typically just have uh, a chair on stage. And, uh, and there's certainly no script. So we create it out of nothing. To the untrained eye, or for those who aren't familiar with improv, it looks like there's no structure or rules. And indeed there are, there are many of them. And I'm going to share with you today three rules of improv that I think have tremendous application uh, to everyday life. The very first rule, and it's probably the golden one of improv, is saying yes. So back to the example of dancing. There's a very good chance that none of the improvisers really understands the intricacies underlying the profession of being a dancer. But that can't stop us from creating a scene. We can't not create a scene because we don't know about dancing. So we say yes, we get up on stage, and we just do it. We figure it out as we go. So we're going to do a little activity right now to show you how saying yes moves things forward it advances the narrative. So if I were to pull something out of my back pocket, oh my gosh, what is this? What do you see here? A hot dog. A hot dog. You do? All righty, let's go with that, a hot dog. Um, so uh, we're going to do this activity, and it's one that I've seen another uh, improviser do, uh, Dave Morris, so with all due respect to Dave. I'm going to ask you a series of questions, and all you need to do is shout out yes. Understand? Yes. Do you want to hear a story? Yes. Is this story about a hot dog? Yes. Does this hot dog have an inferiority complex? Yes. Did this hot dog really want to be a hamburger? Yes. Does this hot dog look in the mirror and go, you know what, I am good enough? Yes. Does this hot dog want to be the best hot dog it can be? Yes. Does this hot dog get eaten? Yes. Does it die? Yes. There we go. We just created a story with a somewhat unhappy ending. Uh, but you said yes, you helped me advance the scene. We moved it forward together. Had you said no to my question of, do you want to hear a story? Well, there goes that. Saying no in improv is what we call blocking. Saying no in real life means you could block yourself. So let's say your friend asks you, I don't know, do you want to take salsa dancing lessons? And you think, I don't know, my hips don't move that way. I'm going to step on his feet. I don't know the music. Or, you know, there's auditions for a high school play, and you think to yourself, oh, I would really love to be in that play, but I'm so afraid, you know, I'm going to forget my lines, and people are going to laugh at me. Get out of your own way. Say yes, and see where it takes you. Let me just add a little disclaimer here. There are times in improv when saying no is not necessarily a bad thing. Likewise, there are times in life when saying no is not only not a bad thing, it's highly advised. So let's say your friend, instead of saying, do you want to take salsa dancing lessons, asks you, you know, do you want to rob a bank with me? You, you should probably politely decline that invitation, right? But within reason and otherwise, Say yes and see where it takes you. So that's rule number one. Rule number two is to be supportive. 
So an improviser who jumps up on stage and wants to be the funny one, you know, be the ham and block others, it's all about me, is actually not a good improviser. That's because improvisers are team players. They support each other. So if I see somebody on stage who's trying to tell a story about a hot dog and I see that she's struggling, it's my job to get up on stage and to help her, to support her, to do or say something to help advance the scene. I mean, even bank robbers, right? They gotta support each other, they gotta work together if they wanna you know, pull off a well-executed bank heist, right? Or let's say I'm on stage and I'm, I'm just drawing a blank. I don't know how to advance a scene about a hot dog. I'm gonna rely on my fellow improvisers to see that I'm in trouble, to get up on stage and to support me. So think about the times in life where you see something or someone struggling and needing help. Maybe you like food, volunteer at a food bank. Uh, do you play a musical instrument, like, I don't know, the piano? Why not play once a month for residents in a nursing home? Or maybe you're an animal lover, volunteer at an animal shelter. Be a good improviser. When you see something or someone needs help, get in there and make it better. Be supportive. Say yes. Be supportive and fail. Fail often. Here's where one of my messages parallels Leah's messages a moment ago, uh, just beautifully. One of the greatest gifts I've received from being an improviser for over the past 10 years is letting myself fail. Scenes fail all the time. I am responsible for a stunning number of unsuccessful scenes. But that's okay, because for every failed scene is a great scene right around the corner, one that's gonna pick me up and make me feel alive for just having tried again. Okay, so maybe you, you went to that audition, hey, guess what, you got the part, and now it's opening night, and you've blown one of your lines. Oh no, what's the big deal? Maybe you delivered the rest of your lines just right. Or you took those salsa dancing lessons, you know, good for you and true enough, yep, you stepped on your partner's foot throughout the entire first class. Not only is your partner very likely to forgive you, but maybe you avoided his or her feet during the whole second class. Or you took your friend up on that ill-advised invitation to rob a bank. Uh-oh, and you know what? You got caught as soon as you walked through the bank doors. Don't worry, there's plenty of other banks out there for you to rob. <laughs> so in the words of Keith Johnstone, a famous improviser with whom I've had the good fortune of studying, we all have to make a thousand mistakes before we get a grip on what it is that we're doing. So get out there and start making them. Say yes, be supportive, and fail often. These are not the only rules of improv. There are many more, but if, if an improviser applies only three rules, these are three pretty good ones. And if these rules are followed, there's a good chance that scenes will succeed. Likewise, there are many more maxims or philosophies or rules we can apply to life. But if you apply only three, these are three pretty good ones. And like improv scenes, if you apply these, there's a very good chance you will succeed. Thank you.